first saw this AIO at CES, I was I was actually super stoked. This is the first of the new Asetek 8th generation pumps, and of course, all the Asus engineering behind it. But was it worth the hype and ultimately the cost for what you're getting? Well, let's dig in, cool? I don't know, what should, what should we do? It's kind of raining new AIOs right now, guys, and Asus has kind of put a splash in the market with their launch of their last round of AIOs, especially when they did their partnership with Noctua on their flagship Reusion 2 with that three and a half inch LCD panel. Like a lot of the big AIO manufacturers, we seem to be seeing a refresh in their AIOs with updates from companies like Deepcool, which we just got finished reviewing, EK, Fantex, and now of course Asus. And now the one that we're covering today is the Ryu 3 from Asus, which is their update to their more enthusiast line of AIOs and the first in the family of all Asus AIOs to have the 8th generation Asetek pump. And one of the first, if not the first Asetek 8th gen AIO on the market. So to say my expectations are high for this one would kind of be an understatement, as is my voice, which seems to be going a little hoarse from, uh, from PAX. So I got, when I said hi, it sounded hi, and it's just hi. But like a lot of things Asus, you're definitely gonna be paying a premium, not just for the Asus name, but also for all of the technology they crammed into this AIO as well. Now when you compare this against other AIOs on the market, it's, it's not cheap. We got it matching the cost of the most expensive ones we've tested, the Corsair H150i Elite Capellix LCD at $289.99. Sorry, not the Elite Capellix. It is the same price as that one too, but I'm talking about the Elite LCD XT, which you should check out the review for right here. Outside of the EK Nucleus CR360, Vision for $239.99. Uh, this is in line with other like older AIOs like the NZXT Z73 or the brand new EVGA CLC X360, which actually is the same price as the white version of this, which is $10 more at $299.99. But all of the other ones that we're talking about, all of the other more expensive ones actually have full LCDs with customizable displays, while the ROG Ryu 3 only has like an anime matrix display, which though very bright and colorful, nowhere near as functional as the other AIOs I have listed. I mean, come on, who doesn't like the animated GIFs or GIFs if you're weird that like go in there and plague and you've seen with all of the, like those really hot Instagram reels or TikToks of like people's setups. This, this doesn't kind of have that. This has something a little bit more limited, but up to you because again, it is very bright and it does look very good. Okay, so let's break down what we get with this new family of coolers. You get the 360 millimeter or the 240 millimeter version. You get the Asetek Gen 8 pump, which actually has three different pump speeds. You get the ROG AF12S fans. Don't, don't worry, we're gonna cover those. And we've got that Anime Matrix LED display, which you can customize in their Matrix Editor and Pixel Editor, which we're gonna show a little bit later on. Now, fans are all RGB and they're all managed via Aura Sync, so you get the Aura Sync options like Starry Nights and all that sort of stuff. And again, we'll show a little bit more of that later on. And looking at the pump itself though, it actually has a unique retention kit that works for both AMD and Intel. So one kit and both platforms are supported. It's got sleeved rubber tubes with the, with some uh, some additional features. It's got aluminum curling and diamond cutting with a vacuum coated lens. That all sounds very premium. It is actually very premium. When you look at this thing, it really pops and I cannot argue at how good it looks. So let's talk a little bit about what is actually supported with this AIO because it's limited to the smaller, more consumer versions of their sockets. For Intel, you've got LGA 1700, which is your 12th and 13th gen. You've got LGA 1200, which is your 10th and 11th gen. And then you've got everything older at LGA 115X. On AMD, you've got all of AM4, which is your Ryzen series. And then you've got your 7000 series Ryzen's with your AM5. Now for the AF12S fans, you actually have some very impressive numbers. They're 2200 RPM at max, give or take about 300 RPM. Uh, they have a static pressure of 3.88 mmH2O, 2 which is actually high for an RGB fan. They also have airflow of 70.07 CFM, and at max they're sitting at around 36.45 decibels. Those numbers do sound impressive, but it is important to take this stuff with a grain of salt. Until we put the whole package together, which we're gonna do here in a bit, impressive numbers may not readily translate to good cooling results. Now, before I do get to the installation, I did wanna add that there has been some improvements from the older Ryu model. This is their three. So there was a two and a one. The copper plate that they have is actually 32% larger, which is good for the new larger IHSs for both Intel and AMD. 
That three phase motor means higher flow, which is good given that it's actually got 40% more liquid capacity inside of the radiator, which is actually pretty awesome. Again, more capacity means more liquid, which means more transfer of heat. All these things should result in better cooling, but let's get this all set up. We're gonna do it on an Intel and AMD board to kind of show off that new bracket. And then when we're done, we'll run through performance. So first thing, let's unbox. Whoa, oh, that was a really, I don't, I don't, maybe I need to go to the gym more because that like that was like half. There we go, that's all the way around. Boom. So inside of this, the first thing you get is you get welcome to the Republic of Gamers. And by the way, you get a credit card. It's a non-functioning credit card. You cannot use this to charge for any, it may not be a credit card at all, but you know, some little, they always have like cool tchotchkes with this, like on their white Asus Strix GPUs, you actually get a massive championship ring, which is pretty cool. This is not as cool as a championship ring, but then again, this is also not 12 or $2,000. So, which is good. You shouldn't have to pay for that. Inside, you actually have uh, the AIO. Here it is. Now this actually has been opened, but something that I found was actually pretty interesting about this. And Josiah can come and check this out. So here we go. First thing we have is I talked about that massive copper plate, much, much bigger plate here uh, in terms of size. And then look at that. I mean, like look at the cut, that, that diamond cut and all that sort of stuff. Again, the pump itself is very premium and I really do like it's vacuum mirror. And when you guys see these LEDs light up, they're very, very bright. The actual radiator itself, check this out. This is the first I've seen. It's actually got a, pl a plastic cover. This is actually really neat um, because I don't know if you've ever seen this in a lot of AIOs, you'll actually see, um, uh, uh, imperfections where packaging and all that sort of stuff is basically hit it. This keeps that from happening just by putting a plastic cover on it, which is actually pretty cool. And again, this would usually have a, a cover on it to protect the screen. This has been opened before, so that's just not on there. Also inside of here, you get your three fans. So there's your three RGB fans uh, as well. And then the last thing you've got is all of your materials. So you've got your cabling, your brackets um, for the different installations. So there's all your stuff. Um, and then lastly, you also get some cool books and of course stickers. This right here, this is why it's just so much more expensive is that you, you definitely need to have stickers. So if you don't have stickers, then you're not one who dares. That's what it says. We're gonna put this on an AMD and we're gonna put this on an Intel board and we'll just see how this whole thing works. And I'm gonna try and do it cleaner than I did last time. So what I'm gonna do now is, first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna grab this bracket. So just putting this in here, pop it down. There we go. And then you're gonna have four posts. You're just gonna basically put these posts into each corner, just like so. There we go, and one more here. And then make sure they're just finger tight, just like so. So inside of this, there are actually two different versions of these tie down, these knots. And these are, they look like this. So these are the different ones that you're gonna to use to basically put on the pump. If it has a bar in between it, it's for the latest AMD and the latest Intel. So 12th and 13th gen and AM5. If it doesn't, that means it's anything older than LGA, LGA 1700 and younger or AM4. So again, that's just something that's super important. So because we're doing 12th gen, we're gonna be using this, but just something that they did, which is actually pretty smart. I thought that was actually pretty cool. So it makes it very, very easy. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to take this and put this down like so. And then I'm gonna use the right brackets and screw it down. Just gonna tighten it down and boom, there we go. This is the more interesting one. So I will say this right out of the box. When you get this AIO, everything is already set up for Intel right out of the box. So like, it's just very easy. It's a very standard AIO installation for doing Intel. It's the AMD one that's actually more interested just given that this now has a universal bracket for putting things on AMD. So let's see how this works. So I'm just gonna grab our AMD board and go from there. So looking at the instructions here, ladies and gentlemen, and always never be afraid of instructions. The way that it essentially works is there are these little bits in here and they look like this. And this is the part that's super interesting is these are essentially brackets that replace the brackets on here. And what this does is this essentially makes it so the Intel materials will work with the AMD. So it spaces it out so you can then use an, an Intel bracket to latch onto an AMD, which is actually pretty cool. Okay, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna remove the standard bracket and you need to save the silver screws. So then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take these, which is what I told you about the brackets. You're gonna make sure these screws are basically sitting up like so. You're gonna take these and you're gonna put them on so the screws are sitting up like this. You're gonna screw them down with the exact same screws 
that you had before. And it's actually even got on here, check it out. It's even listed, it says CPU, it shows you CPU socket this way, so you'll know which direction you're supposed to install it. Pretty ingenious. Now, the rumor is, and I and I think I can confirm this here in a second, but rumor is that all of the Asetech, the new Asetech 8th gen ones, actually have these brackets. So you will, this will be the standard thing, like if you get, the Fantex or any of those, this will be the standard way that you'll do the installation for those as well. But now if you look at it with the way it is, now this pump just goes right over it just like that. And now you you can basically just install it the normal way. Pretty straightforward, your AI is installed. Very, very like honestly genius. I'm really surprised that this took this long to get figured out because this makes it very simple. You're not switching brackets. It just, you're, you're no, no fuss and it just works the same way whether you install an AMD or Intel and all you do is replace this bracket. Now, let's get it all set up and let's let's show you the rest of just getting it hooked up. Okay, so now we're gonna do, let's just get all the fans. Oh, we'll go ahead and install the fans. Might as well do that now. It's all dependent on how your, your particular setup is. So this may not be exact. So this isn't an installation guide. It just shows you some mounting guides, but it doesn't, I'm not gonna show you ready or, or case installation because that's so case dependent. So real quick, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what you're gonna to have to do to basically get this set up because uh, it's, it's going to vary, but let's just show you about what connection. So for your AIO itself, you actually have the three individual fans. You're actually gonna plug all of those into your fan splitter, just like so. And then you're gonna take your three RGB, which are these right here, and they actually give you a beautiful RGB splitter. It allows you to connect everything up. So that's really easy. You're just gonna plug all these in. Okay, so now we've got it all set up. And now the question is, is that once you have it set up, just I wanted to show you a little bit about the Asus um, Armory Crate software because there are some things that you can change. So we're gonna show you that. So let's pop open Armory Crate and I'll kind of show you some of the things here. So here we have, we have Armory Crate open. And then right over here, you actually have a couple options for the Ryu 3. Uh, you have one that's just kind of like your, your standard anime matrix, which has like your, your basic stuff you can change. But then you also have this option, which is their anime matrix software which is more where you can create your create and customize your own loops here and right now you can see we have here kaleidoscope there actually are more you can download um, if you want to and, and go and check those and so there's a bunch of other downloads there i'm not going to worry about that one i'm going to show you here oh wow there's a lot wow look at this drinking martinis heart rate look at this lunar new year wow wow so many things that we can download but let's think of the stuff that you've already got so here you on the left you actually have like halloween they have their regular gallery and what you can do is you literally drag it over and it's showing you a preview of what you're seeing here. And then when I hit, uh, let's go ahead and delete this one and then hit apply, you're gonna see it just change right here on side. And then now we've got that more standard ROG one. Here, let's throw, let's throw the Halloween one on here now and then I'll hit apply. And then now we've got a ghostly Halloween kind of thing. So the other thing that they have as well is they actually have a pixel so you can make like a static image. Um, I don't have that downloaded specifically, but again, we're gonna show you a picture of that here um, where you can actually make your own static image. So if you wanted to make like a Robitech logo and I love you for that, you can absolutely do that as well. Now, one last bit that you guys always care about is let's talk about and show you uh, how loud the fans in are at different settings. So here we are, we're currently at idle. The pump is at max, so you're gonna basically see pump decibels as well as fan decibels at this level. So let's get, let's just get an overall room ambient temperature, right? So this is room ambient. So room ambient's 42. Okay, so now, here we are. What's it saying, Josiah? Okay, so we got about two decibels. Now also here, you can see that I'm gonna get close to the pump. Again, it'll probably be 46 there too, so we'll let you get that. Forty-six. Okay, so forty-six. Let's see what it's at when we basically put it on max. So we're gonna load up Cinebench. Because you're seeing that here. Let's go ahead and start this. Same place. What are we hitting? 
Okay, so about 10 decibels more when we're at max. So for the last setting, what we're gonna verify is when you're gaming. So again, this is where I think it's actually gonna be pretty close to, pretty close to the, the um, normal ambient temperature, but I'm gonna, we're gonna run a benchmark. This is Call of Duty. Um, this is indicative. We've seen this in terms of this is close to where it was from seeing from a gaming standpoint. So here we go. What's it at? Like 47, 48. Yeah, see, again, two, like that, it's it's basically near quiet, you know what I mean? So this is why you're paying the money for an AIO like this is again, because when you're gaming, you're not hearing it cool, your AIO. It's, I mean, you can see right now on the screen, show them just like, it's, it's running the game. Like, we're not doing anything and this thing is, uh, it's got a great fan curve to keep it cool. So it's just doing a good job and keeping it quiet and cool at the same time. Well, now that we've covered all the basics, how, how does this thing actually perform? So let's just recap for a second. If you haven't seen one of our AI reviews, we just test the 360 millimeter AIO versions of these coolers and we test them on the Core i7-13700K. Again, this is because we know that all 360 millimeter AIO coolers can handle and should be able to handle a 13700K. So when we're using a 360 millimeter AIO, what this does is it allows us to show the variance in cooling capacity versus just having bad coolers top out at 100 degrees. The AIO is also installed in the same system as all the other AIOs and that's a Lee and Lee Land Cool 3 with all the fan slots filled with high-end Noctua fans. This is to ensure that we are giving each AIO the best possible chance of success and give the ability to show just how good the AIO is at cooling and rule all other factors out. So all that being said, at idle, right off the bat, things look really good for the Asus Rio 3. It's given the lowest temperatures of the entire lot of AIOs. And it seems like all of those upgrades they did to this version, including the Asetek Gen 8 pump, are good until, and, and this is the weird thing, until you put it fully under load. And where we saw this at the bottom for the list when we talked about idle, we're shipping to be on par with pretty much any of the coolers out there. But unfortunately, it's not running as cool as either the older H150i Elite or the new CR360 Nucleus. However, I wanna add this new chart here, and this is something that we've, we're now adding, and you can, you can look at this, if you're looking at our reviews from other models, you'll see the other models on there. This is what you are going to see from an average temperature for gaming. And again, this pops up as one of the coolest temperatures on average game load, tied with the current king, the EK Nucleus, at 52 degrees at its average temperature on our 13700K. Why is that important? Well, this is where you're actually paying for this because it tells you three different stories. If you're looking for a cooler that is essentially about like doing idle tasks, like email, etc., you do light work and you just want your, your AIO to be silent and your temperatures to be cool, great AIO for that. For gaming, again, you don't wanna have like a jet engine basically blowing on the, the uh, side of your face and you want something that's quiet, but also doing it a dang good job to keep your temps low so your fan curve doesn't go high. This is where we're seeing a really, really good job from the Ryu 3. Now where we may see something and where you might see a better capacity, like say for instance, the Fantex Glacier with T30s or something like that, then you're doing high performance, uh, high CPU tasks, like Cinebench, like rendering, etc. That's where we see this one probably pop down a little bit. But when we think about the market, um, then that's where I think that this is actually where you see the performance hitting in the best place. And that's mostly at gaming temperatures and that's mostly at idle temperatures. So the question is, is it worth it? I mean, honestly, that's up to you. You do have a lot more customization than you do with the EK Nucleus. And this is more in par with the Corsair model of AIOs, given what you can do to match and make your system be set apart. But we also have this chart here, which is showing you what you think about when you just think about value, which is when you think of this as a tool, you're paying more for just cooling and it's just a tool for cooling than just understand you are overpaying for what you are getting from a cooling standpoint. But it's going to be up to you if the aesthetics and the software extras and everything else that you get with this AIO is worth it to you. So wrapping it all up, the Asus ROG Ryu 3 has a lot of new tech that for the majority of you out there is going to do a dang good job of keeping your system cool and silent 
when doing the everyday tasks and gaming, which is who this cooler is really targeted at. However, if you're looking to pay for the best price for cooling, then this isn't the AIO for you. This is for enthusiasts who are looking for the bling and the aesthetics and not necessarily budget-friendly options. If you compare this to the price of other similar AIOs like the H150i LCD or the Z73, then it's priced appropriately and targeted at the people who want to make their system stand out. And if you're angry about the cost of the cooler, <laughs> then this cooler isn't for you. But now, it is about what you think. What do you think about the Ryu 3? Do you like the LED versus like the normal screen on like the Z73 or Elite LCD series from Corsair? And how was the cooling given what you expected? And then lastly, was there anything we missed? I'd love to know all that down in the comments below. Now, while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we post a video like this over here on Robitech. Now, we do use this, and in fact, we're actually about to use this in a whole build with their brand new, um, their brand new case and cooler and all that sort of stuff. So if you wanna see that, you should watch our live streams on Robitech Live uh, every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific time. And if, if YouTube's not your thing, which, Again, I don't know how that works because you're watching on YouTube, but if you want to watch live on Twitch, then you can move over to twitch.tv slash Robitech, where we're also streaming them there. And then again, if you have questions, you want to talk more about this, or if there's something from the tech side that wasn't entirely clear to you, then head on over to discord.gg slash Robitech, where we have other tech and PC enthusiasts that love to talk about these very subjects on cooling, part picking, all that sort of stuff. And you know what? You might make a friend. Outside of that, we have content all over the place. Uh, you can watch us at Robitech absolutely everywhere. Guys, we really hope you enjoyed this video and we look forward to seeing you on the next one.